I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Once again, welcome back to another review, and this is another Patreon request for Sean. If anyone wants to request any type of reviews for movies or other stuff, or re-reviews, topics, reactions, lists, pretty much any type of video, you can send the request either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Again, I apologize for the audio issues. I'm trying my best to fix it. But, Duel. Do was the request for today. 1971 is when it came out. And that's where I got the sobering thought process that this was 50 years, almost 50 years ago this film came out. Now think about that. This is an almost 50-year-old movie. And I just went, man, I feel old. Holy shit. That was my reaction. Holy shit. Because I looked at this, that, that's just crazy to me. And I remember when I first saw this was on VHS tape. I saw this on VHS. It was a store called On Cue, way, way, way long forgotten by anybody. It was in Minnesota, this place was at. I think Sally, years after I got this tape, and the... Beginning of the 2000s, it got taken over by either Suncoast or Sam Goody or one of those places. But I loved On Cue. That's where I got VHS tapes of Dog the Dead, George Romero's film, and John Carver's The Thing, and many others. And the, the VHS struck me because of, okay, it seems simple. It's like this scary looking diesel truck and a guy <laughs> ready to shit his pants. And then not knowing, like, wow, this is directed by Steven Spielberg? Okay, it's one of his first endeavors, at least full-length feature film status, and before Jaws, before Close Encounters, Third Kind. And, you know what, Steven Spielberg did a great job. I think this is one of his best films, it, honestly. Because it showcases that he had the limitations of a TV budget, what he could get away with on TV, but he's like, you know what, I'm not just going to make an after-school special bullshit film. This is a movie that's fairly riveting, even to this day. And it's very simple. An ordinary guy, played by Dennis Weaver, is going from point A to point B, and there's this diesel truck. And what I like about this movie, because there's been other movies that have done this similar type, some better, some worse. But Dennis Weaver's character, in some movies, there's always some kind of crime or sin, or they just do something stupid, like Joyride. Steve's on, fucks with the, the trucker on the CB radio. And no, that doesn't mean they deserve to die, but it's like, oh, if they didn't do that. No, Dennis Weaver here, 
I it was fairly refreshing. He did nothing wrong. He's driving normally. He's not haunting. He's not doing the middle finger, doing the sotje DX style. He's not go fuck you, you know. He's not running the the truck or cutting it off. No, he does everything the right way. He passes like any normal person would. Gives the guy enough space. And it's like the guy's like, you're not going to pass me. There's even a point where the truck is like, yeah, come on, pass me. And Dennis Weaver does. And then there's a car coming towards us. Oh, shit. And literally, he did nothing wrong. And I, I, just something about that made it, like I said, refreshing watching it again. That didn't, it didn't have to be some kind of crime or some kind of even little teeny itty bitty mistake the person made to get him into this trouble. Which in a way is relatable because there's a lot of us that would not do anything wrong. And on top of that, you get really solid direction. I mean, the movie, when it it goes at a good pace, it was like 70 minutes long, the TV cut, which I've never seen the TV cut. For I understand what was added was like the scene where Dennis Weaver's on the phone talking to his wife and... Maybe one or two other scenes. I don't know all the details. But they had to add scenes because people went, oh, well, shit. This is, I mean, for a TV movie, it's pretty good. Hell, it would work for a theatrical. So add in some more footage you put in the theaters. And this is one of those things that showcases how just because something is simple doesn't mean it's not effective. Uh, the, the direction from the beginning the first shot being this POV of Dennis Weaver back down out of the car, back out of the garage, going through the city, then slowly shifting to the the desert area. Interesting way to open up the film. Uh, certain shots, there's, for example, there's a point where he's driving his car and we see the camera's far away, and the car does like this. It stops. You're like, why did it do that? So then the camera pulls back and it pulls back to being underneath the carriage of the diesel truck watching him. Like that was a nice, interesting way of detailing a a reveal of the villainous vehicle. The way the the action scenes, the, the, the car chases are shot. You really feel the speed and momentum with this big ass diesel truck right on your ass, ready to hump you and fuck you in your mouth. In your eye and in your ear. And Dennis Weaver, I thought, did a good job. He really showcased, he was a normal guy, but he also showcased the exasperation. And there's a point where the cars and this incline and there's smoke coming out. He's like desperate, like, come on, come on, car, come on. You really see the fear in the guy's eyes and voice. But it's not overdramatic to the point it becomes comedy or parody or laughable. That was much appreciated. The score, uh, which is uh, limited usage, but when it's used, it's well done. The Another thing that's interesting is that you never see the driver. I thought that was a nice choice. Like there's a scene when he goes to the diner and he sees the truck out there. Then he looks in and he's wondering, is any one of these guys that person? And then he even imagines, what if I walk up to him and they do like this POV shot. Like what if he walked up, hey, you know, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. Can I buy you a beer? And this person turns around or this person turns around. And his increasing paranoia, is that person it? Is that person it? And also the confusion, like, why is this guy doing this? Like, what the hell did I do wrong? It makes the character definitely more, not only relatable, but easier to feel sorry for, if that makes sense. And it goes by a good pace. Like, I found the film, I never found it boring, not one bit. Uh, Richard Matheson had a hand in writing it. Did a really good job. Richard Matheson, of course, I Am Legend, all that jazz. (laughs) 
And it's one of those things where you have different obstacles. Uh, you have the scene where the truck's trying to push him into this moving train. Or the at times the truck driver is trying to be maybe a smart psychopathic asshole. Just like there's a school bus and Dennis Weaver tries to push out away, but he can't. His bumper gets stuck. And then, they, okay, the diesel's going to come. Is he going to smash through the school bus? No, he pushes the school bus and helps it. Which, in a way, is a smart idea for the villain to do because then if anything happens, someone could say, oh, yeah, he was a good Samaritan. He helped us and these poor kids who were trapped in the middle of nowhere. But then that kind of goes out the window because, like, 10 minutes later, he tries to kill Dennis Weaver you know, on the snake farm where there's a witness who would, yeah, this guy, this asshole truck driver smashed my phone booth and tried to kill all my snakes and fucked up all the cages my snakes and tarantulas were in. <laughs> so he's like, okay, he, he did it for one thing but not the other. But on the flip side, I can understand you want to put at least a bit more of danger where, oh yeah, Dennis Reeves going to call the cops? Nuh-uh, no thank you, I'm going to smash your fucking phone booth. Back when we had these things called phone booths. Even the truck itself, Spielberg put a little bit of life into it. Like when it's it's death now, when it goes over the cliff, you almost hear like a roar. Which I know he would use that in Jaws because when the shark gets blown up and then when it's gliding in the water, dying, you hear like this roar underwater. That's the roar at the end of this film. And Spielberg would go, well, what would that sound like if it was underwater? Because that was his nod duel. Because I dare fucking T, one of the reasons Jaws got made was because of this. Not just because, well, it was four letters, duel, Jaws. No, but you were, I think about it. If you replace the shark with a vehicle, this is, is a precursor to Jaws. And... Well, I was talking about the life when it's crashed. One of the last things we see is the wheels going almost as if it's a heartbeat, and then the the tire just slowly stops. And it's kind of like the that's the moment where the vehicle is truly dead. Maybe I'm looking more into it than I should, but that's the thing when when you get a good movie, you're able to do stuff like that, and I'm fine with it. So, yeah, Dennis Weaver, likable guy, moves at a good pace, well photographed, nice looking shots uh, during the chase sequences, and I think you really get a feel of the speed and velocity. <coughs> and you see even a little bit of Dennis Weaver's character become a bit more like a man, where... You know, he's very scared and frazzled, but then it comes to a point where, you know, he's going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this thing. Uh, five, ten minutes before that, uh, there's a moment where he gets out of his car and he's ready to march up to it. Now, he doesn't yell, scream, like, I'm here. You know, he doesn't do the Jennifer Love Hewitt. I know what he did last summer. Come and get me. You know, he doesn't do that shit, but, uh, you know, it still is that movement of... You know, what do you want? You know, I'm not afraid of you anymore. So all in all, Duel to me is a very well done film. I don't know if the movie's on Blu-ray. If it does, I don't know if it has any more features than the DVD. I have the DVD case over there. It has like a little interview with Steven Spielberg. And I think an interview with Richard Matheson. Really nothing else. Again, I don't know if there's a Blu-ray that has more features on it. If... It might, I mean, it might have a Blu-ray that has the same feature. I don't know. It, it's a movie that, it does deserve a bit more features. Uh, yeah. Or a commentary. If Spielberg never does commentaries, but someone could do a commentary. But yeah, I mean, for a TV movie, it's easily one of the best TV movies ever made. I could easily say that. Easily. It does its simple job very well and very effectively. And again, that sobering thought that this is almost 50 fucking years old. And you know what? To me, it still holds up. Yeah, you could say it's dated. Well, 
the whole thing, the notion of being something being dated, a movie is dated one day after it comes out. Just by the next years, there'll be a different cell phone and different cars and different clothes and different special effects and different all that. So every fucking movie is dated. That's just the case. So to me, it holds up very well. And I wonder if you could do this kind of... I mean, there are movies that attempt it, but then you'd have to account, oh, what about their cell phone? Oh, the signal doesn't work. Oh, what about GPS? Well, that doesn't work too. Then, then your audience is asking questions about that. Would that happen? Would it not happen? And then already the mind is leaving the movie, so hopefully you do a good enough job with other elements to get them back in. Some movies are successful with that. Some are not. But... Uh, that's, in a way, one of the luxuries of a movie like Duel back in the day. You didn't have to worry about that because there were no such thing. So it made the notion of being in the middle of nowhere helpless more palatable. And like I said, it's, a, it's effective thriller. It's an effective road thriller. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We will see you guys in, the late, in the, another video. Bye-bye.